The details of Justice Ginsburg's memorial are unique, but her family's grief is recognized by far too many Americans who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. The House of Representatives held a moment of silence yesterday to acknowledge that painful milestone. More than 200,000 people in the U.S. who have died from COVID-19. Hundreds more die every day. Still an alarming rate of loss. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, joins us. David, you've witnessed both heartbreak and resolve. We have, Anthony. You know, it wasn't that long ago when we first heard Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci say there was the possibility and the potential that we could reach 200,000 deaths in this country. And collectively, we were shocked. Now seven months into this pandemic, here we are. We don't wish this on anyone, but... Natalie and Maureen Fagan lost their sister Adeline to complications from coronavirus on Saturday. Dr. Fagan, who had a history of asthma, was in her second year of residency as an OBGYN in Houston, Texas. She had helped to treat coronavirus patients in the ER, and she died after spending two months in the hospital. She wanted to wake up every day, do what she loved, which is delivering babies, be compassionate, help women, help children. Kimora Lynham died on July 17th. She was just nine years old and had no underlying health conditions. Jermaine Stevens dreamed of playing professional football like his father. The 20-year-old died due to coronavirus complications earlier this month. My son was so full of life and had so many plans and so much life to live and to have that dream deterred by COVID is devastating. The reality is the pandemic is far from over, experts say. 28 states report increases in new cases from one week ago, and cases are rising at rates not seen in two months. Here's former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb's fear as we move in the fall. The concern is that as we get a little bit more complacent because we are exhausted as a population from what we've been going through. We head back to school and college. People try to go back to work against the backdrop of the fall and the winter when people are heading indoors because the weather's cooling. That's a real setup for risk. The longer the pandemic, the more people are at risk, from the elderly to frontline workers, like doctors Carlos and Jorge Vallejo, father and son from South Florida, who were both hospitalized with coronavirus on Father's Day. They died just weeks apart. Miss Virginia Smith died of coronavirus at the age of 90. She was a grandmother to 12 and a great grandmother to 10. She was also a devout Catholic who attended mass every day for nearly 40 years. Was not, Caroline is um, her daughter. I think it's really difficult to understand what the elderly patients in care facilities are going through, how lonely they are. And then in their time of greatest need, they're left alone. Here are some of the statistics. People 55 and older account for 90% of coronavirus deaths. Black Americans are twice as likely to die. Gail, this week we were talking to one of the leading infectious disease experts in the country who told my producer and I something we were shocked to hear. He said, I believe that down the road we will look back and say, if only, if only we had just stayed at 200,000. Yes. Yeah. Boy. That... That leaves us a lot to think about, David. I, I, I don't take that 200,000 number lightly at all. Thank you very much. And it's a reminder. It reminds me of the pieces that you do, Anthony, that you used to do every Friday, that behind those numbers yes, are, people. are people. And 200,000 families and relatives are mourning the loss. Yeah, well, some, here, that means millions that, of people are literally mourning the loss. But in many cases, yeah. and the more we hear, maybe the number didn't have to be that high. No. That's another thing that's so painful to acknowledge. What we're looking at with, with this virus is a cause of death that is likely to be in the top three for the whole year, just behind heart disease and cancer. Think about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's a staggering number. And as, as David points out, it's not over. And we're seeing in Europe a resurgence of, of, uh, of cases and the spread of the virus again. So, you know, this, yeah. this has got a long way to go. Still. Yeah, we may say that we're tired of COVID, but COVID is not done with us. No. It is still a raging problem. We have to take this seriously.